It's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is my most commonly used ISO values. Where do I start setting my ISO most of the time? I got this question from a YouTube subscriber and I didn't really know. I did a little bit of research and here's what I came up with. About 40% of the time I use ISO 320 or 400 and about 75% of the time my ISO is between 200 and 800. But you can see that 400 ISO is the most commonly used one. And this is really true for where I live. So I live in the Pacific Northwest. It is cloudy a lot of the time. And I need a little bit higher ISO than if I lived in Florida or Southern California. My native ISO for most of my cameras is around 200. And I get there, you know, about 6% of the time. But most of the time, I start at 400, and I work down if there's enough light, and I work up if there's not enough light. So 400 is my basically my starting point. And that kind of shows up with, with the data here. Now you can see that I only have taken 119 photos at 12,800 ISO. And that is because, well, most of the time, I just don't shoot that high. But this hummingbird shot, which was handheld, was shot at 12,800 ISO. And so you can see that it can work. And let me just say that all of the images that I'm going to show you today, I did not run through Topaz Denoise. I did the regular sort of Lightroom processing on them. The way that I set up my camera when I start at the beginning of the day is I take an exposure and I set the aperture. I set the shutter speed and then I kind of adjust the ISO for the amount of light that I have right then. And then throughout the morning I will lower the ISO as the sun starts to come up. And then individually on each photo, if I need to do like exposure compensation, I shoot in manual mode, so if I do exposure compensation I'm essentially underexposing or overexposing the image and I'll do that by varying the shutter speed. I can move the dial with my thumb and reset my exposure. Here's a Peregrine Falcon, ISO 200, no big noise factors. 400, pretty good. This was just taken last month in Florida. Royal turn from January. ISO 500, there's a little bit of graininess back in here. At ISO 640, you can see that there's some grain developing. And then with this Northern Perula down in Florida last month, you know, there's a little bit of noise and stuff in here that I could, could reduce. If I ran this through Topaz Denoise AI, it would be pretty good. 1600 just a few weeks ago. Pretty good image for 1600. You know, back in here there's some noise. All of that could be reduced in post-processing. And then the wood duck at 3200. And then here we go with the uh, ISO 6400. Uh, Peregrine Falcon. Pretty noisy, but then again it's a dark day. Not a lot of good light. If you want to learn more about bird photography and take better bird pictures, pick up a copy of my book from Amazon, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available as a Kindle and as a trade paperback, and it covers all of the really important field techniques that you will need to become a better bird photographer. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. I would really appreciate that. Hey, thanks for watching this week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.